Hi folks, welcome. Thanks for joining. So this video is going to be talking about the important menu settings in Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation because there are a lot of settings in the menus and not everything is very obvious. So I want to make a video covering what I think are the most important settings. So first things first, memory allocation. So I have this set to 2048 right now, which means that I'm using that much RAM to run the program. Now I believe that you can allocate more or less and I'm not sure, it was originally set to less than that and I upped it to 2048 and it seems to run okay, but I, it's not flawless, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't run zooming fast all the time and I kinda don't like that. So if you think that I could allocate more memory, please let me know. I have 16 gigs of RAM on this computer and potentially would like it to run super duper fast, but it doesn't, it runs like 78% fast, so yeah. Okay, messages. Okay, so this stuff right here is basically any extra messages that TWS pops up for you when you make an order. So stuff like this. If you wanna get rid of that, just uncheck this box right here, okay? So market order confirmation, all of this stuff is important. If you don't wanna get disturbed by weird messages, you can turn them off or turn them on as you like. Pretty important, okay. Sound, this is the sound manager. You can change the voice of um, basically any sound connected to Trader Workstation. You can change the sound of the alerts, of the order field, etc. Order field. Like that one. So let's get right to the display settings. Now, in my opinion, the most important settings are in the display here. So let's get right into it. So flash bulletins. Okay, now title bar text. So if you whatever you put here, is going to show up on any of your tabs. If you've made other tabs on Trader Workstation, this is going to show up at the top of your tab. As you can see, my options chain down here, you can see Virillo Trading shows up, but not in the actual tab itself, but down there at the bottom. All right, so here you can change the general font for the entire application. I generally have it set to between 14 and 16, but actually my tab settings are at 13 font, so yeah. Um, here, there's a couple of settings for use system bar, large menu text, etc. And obviously the color palette of the application. I have mine set to dark right now. One of the most important settings is here in the ticker row settings. Very important. So display, ticker row. And we go, you can choose to show your position values in your base currency or not. That's quite important, especially if you trade in a different currency than your account. So I'm Canadian, so my account is, is in Canadian dollars but I do trade only in US dollars, so I have this turned off, okay? Highlight higher low of the day, that's important. Now here, this is the one that everyone freaks out about, which is this one, display tick dots instead of colored prices. So you see how my time in sales is displaying the prices in color? That's what it is, so that's because it's unchecked. If I checked it, it would look like this, which is kind of ugly. See, it's not, it doesn't have as much clarity. I prefer the color, it's much clearer to see that order flow, okay? Remove leading zero before decimal point. I mean, yeah, you could do that, but I find it confusing. So for example, if you're buying contracts that are like 30 cents, you're just gonna see dot 30. You're not gonna see 0 0.30. So it can get a little confusing, so I leave that unchecked. All right, here is increase average price precision by up to four points. So basically, it's trying to be precise in telling you what your actual average price is, calculating the commissions you paid also. So it's very important. I remember when I had an account with Quest Trade, you'd be in a position, but the average price showed you would not include the commissions you paid. So, you know, just to get a better idea. Complex multi-leg positions, so you can group, you can choose to group legs into complex positions or hide complex positions. So this depends if you trade spreads and complex type of positions. In my opinion, that's not that important. Okay, so this volume column display settings is basically, look, native volume data does not update with every tick, but will include delayed transactions, bursts, late reported trades, and combos. So I preferred it to show that because I want to see delayed transactions, burst, and combos, combo orders. With If you select this, you won't be seeing those coming in until much later. Now this one is very important, market data down here. You can see the third setting is do not prompt for market data subscriptions. Check that box. Once you're happy with your market data subscriptions, check it, and then you will not get any prompts for market data. 
So it's very important, okay? All right, guys, let's keep going. Font. Generally, you want to try and be consistent with your font on your page. So whatever your monitor is, you can set your font to that. So, for example, mine is set to 13 on everything, and it looks fine, okay? Sometimes if you have too big of a font, it can kind of look cluttered. All right, guys, let's talk about the book trader here. There's a few important features about this thing. As you can see, it's just a price ladder. It shows a bid and ask, best bid and best offer, and it shows the cumulative size on either side. Now, I like to use this as a level two just because I like the look of it and it's cool. But the thing is, right out of the box, it doesn't look like this. So you need to make sure you go on full screen mode. So look right there, you can see on that little drop down arrow, now it's not full screen. You have this ugly thing showing up. If you want to get rid of that, you full screen it. And, and now you can see bid size, ask size, and you're good, you know? Now, in the settings, there's a few important things to keep in mind. So up here, you can, all these display buttons, I turn them all off. You can turn them on. Display deep book buttons, user configurable, configurable buttons, display or hide toolbar. I got them all out of there. Okay, there's other things you can use. So basically, a lot of these tools are if you trade off of the book trader. I personally do not trade off the book trader, so I do not need any of that stuff. Okay, one thing is that when when the price scrolls away from where it's trading. So for example, let's say it's trading at $2 and then all of a sudden it shoots up to $3. The thing about this thing is that it recenters itself. So you have to set it to how many rows away before it recenters. So I have it set to 50 rows. So when the last price moves 50 rows from the center view, it will uh, recenter itself. Okay. Now, now it's not recentering itself, I guess, because I'm in the menu or something. Now, another thing is this right here, you see this setting display auto scroll countdown after scrolling. This is easily one of the most annoying things in Trader Workstation. So if I turn that on, you'll see Every time I scroll away from the price, you see this time remaining until auto recentering. That is absolutely so annoying. And every time I scroll away, it's just gonna show me that message. Okay, whatever it is, I put it on Roku. Yeah, so that annoying time remaining until auto recentering. So guys, if you wanna get rid of that, you just go here to the settings and at the bottom display and you, you turn it off. That's it. <laughs> I have color marketable price areas turned on just because or else it would, you can see that the middle zone here, those are your marketable areas. So that's the, basically the width of the spread. I have the price histogram turned off. I have the high and low turned on and then show cumulative size in the bid and the ask, okay? So that's it pretty much for the book trader. Let's go on here. Okay, for the watch list, there's a couple interesting settings for the watch list apart from color settings. There's a couple of things here. Um, one of them is cell padding. Now let's get into this. Hold on. There it is. So you go to watch list windows and you can see here, you could choose your font size and your cell padding. And what the cell padding basically does is it makes the most, it makes more space between the tickers on your watch list. So for example, if you have vision issues and you want more space between your tickers, you can set that higher and you can see I just, increase the width of it. But if you don't have a problem with that, just keep it, keep it low. So that's quite important. Actually, it's an interesting visual feature that I didn't know existed. Okay. All right, guys, let's get to the charts here. Now with the charts, there's a lot of interesting things to keep in mind here. So with charts, we have first things first, quote zone. So basically, this is our quote zone. Whenever you highlight a candle right at the bottom of the candle, you can choose see at the bottom there, high, low, close, volume. That's my quote zone personally. So let's go into the settings again. So basically all of this stuff is your chart settings. Now here on highlight on the Y axis, you can choose to highlight your last price, your high and your low and your cursor price. That's what I have. So what that does is that when you have a chart, it will highlight the high of the day, it will highlight the low of the day, it will highlight the current price, and it will highlight the price of the of where your uh, mouse is scrolling. So that is quite convenient, and I highly recommend using that, okay? Keep going. Now, there's a glitch that occurs sometimes in Trader Workstation that uh, I, cut, I contacted customer service about this and they taught me how to fix it. It's basically when your volume disappears and you're unable to bring it back for some reason on a chart. So what you need to do in order to bring that back is you go into the chart settings and you go 
you go to this setting right here, what to show when switching financial instrument. And you just change it to either if it's set to default to financial instrument type, change it to this one, then change your ticker on the chart, then your volume should appear and then you can change it back. So default to financial instrument type. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. I guess I'm going to click retain current. At this point, it won't matter what it's set to. As long as I can see my chart, everything is good, okay? Okay, so tool tips, display bar details, display in bar details zone. So that's at the bottom, high, low, volume, close, and separate studies if you want, okay? So for example, if you had an RSI indicator down, down here at the bottom, you would see it here at the bottom showing up. You see your RSI is at 20, for example. And that's kind of convenient. So I might play with that a little bit, actually. I wonder if there's a way of pulling up your RSI here and maybe closing the RSI, but still having the RSI number being displayed there. So just to get a general figure of the RSI is like below 20, I don't really need to see the line in order to gauge how oversold something is, all right? Miscellaneous features, there is a few important ones here. Now, allow more than 500 bars. I still have to play with this one, and I wanna figure out if it can potentially save me some CPU and make the program run faster. So I'm gonna try unchecking that for now. Now, this one is one of the most important features, which is the line grab sensitivity. I have it set to low, and I'll tell you why. Because when you create a line on a chart, Normally, if you have it set to a high sensitivity, it's gonna be so annoying to grab the line and, and like say move it or drag it or do something with it. But if you have the line grab sensitivity to low, you'll never have a problem grabbing your line, okay? So that's an important feature. Another thing is the up down arrow key selection. Go into general configuration, you can see here, up down arrow key action, I have it set to adjust bar width. The reason I have that is because on your mouse, your mouse wheel scroll is set to mimic what up down arrows do on your keyboard for some reason by default. So generally I use the mouse wheel to kind of zoom in and out on a chart. So if you have that set to, to adjust the active orders price, it's not gonna zoom out in and out of your chart anymore for some reason. So that's another important feature. Okay, here's another thing about volume. Calculate volume chart bars between updates. I have it set to checked to calculate them because I wanna see the volume chart data as soon as possible, as soon as it comes. I don't necessarily have an extra five seconds sometimes to wait for that volume to update, okay? You wanna be seeing it as it comes in. Does that make sense? All right guys, there's a few extra settings here relating to charts. So go into your chart, click on edit, then chart parameters. And in the chart parameters, there's a few interesting things that are quite important for your charts. You can choose the time frame, what to show, bar type, um, volume plot height, small, medium, large. Actually, I never tried that. Let's just try it for fun. Small, oh, that's interesting. Medium, yeah, maybe I'll set it to medium. Who knows? All right, keep going. Adjust data for dividends, that's quite important. You can choose to make it a manual scale, vertical scale, that is. I don't mess with that. And here, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can choose to show or not show on your chart. I have basically option volatility selected, and that's pretty much it. This legend here, if you show the legend, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of noise on your chart like that, so I suggest turning the legend off. Okay, what else was there here? Standard deviations, not sure how useful that is. You can choose to highlight on your chart dividends, news, which I don't recommend because it's gonna show a bunch of weird dots appearing on your chart, so I don't recommend that. You can show, choose to show your trades appearing on the chart, that is in fact useful. I usually turn it off though. And okay, this one's important, the vertical buffer. If you have it set to scale to fit studies, it's going to mess with your bars based on how many studies you have on the chart. So if you have volatility and like 20 RSIs here, it's gonna make your bar chart look weird and scrunched up. Whereas if you have it set to ignore studies, then the bar chart's gonna look the same. So you can choose what you prefer there. If you display the vertical scroll bar, it's gonna give you a an option here to adjust a vertical buffer. But again, I just find that not very useful. One of the most important features here is the show data outside of regular trading hours. And so if you have this selected, it's gonna show your pre-market and post-market stuff. So generally, it's good to have that selected. The only thing is I don't like about Trader Workstation is that it doesn't uh, highlight 
the pre-market hours as something different, like a different color of background or something. Maybe there, there could be a setting for that. So if you heard that, I please recommend that setting. So for pre-market and post-market trading, there should be a slightly different color palette to the chart, like in TradingView. Okay, the last thing is you can save your chart layouts. This is so important. Go to File, Save Chart Template As, and then you can save it as whatever you want. It's gonna save it in the TWS files and it'll save it as whatever you like. And you can also open any chart template. So it doesn't matter which session you have, if it's a paper trading account, another account completely, if you have your chart templates saved, you can import all of your chart templates from any other previous session. So that is quite useful, right? So if I click on open chart template, I put this one in, you can see I got my chart template, boom. Okay, so the toolbar at the top of your chart this part right here at the top of any chart, you can basically select whatever it is you need up there. So personally, I have the buy and sell buttons deactivated on the chart, and that can be deactivated in the settings, or in the, yeah, it's in the settings. I have that completely deactivated because I have hotkeys, and I personally found it ugly. So to set alerts, you can either set a hotkey to set an alert, or you can make the alert button appear right here at the top of the chart. So I have it set to that. So basically the only thing I have appearing at the top of the chart is add commentary, draw lines, reposition, turn crosshair on and off, add a line to the chart and add an alert to the chart. So basically I'm not cluttered in terms of stuff I need. In the order settings of Trader Workstation, there's a, a few things here. Um, generally none of this is that important. But what is important is this smart routing. Smart routing is quite important. Now, if you use smart routing, you need to figure out what kind of smart routing you need. Generally, the smart multi-purpose is probably the best case. Um, some people say that if you put this maximized rebate on, it will give you a better commission or better fill. But I think it generally depends on which instruments you're trading and what kind of availability there is and if you're adding liquidity or not. So I've never really had any issues with uh, the multi-purpose smart if you're like, uh, if you want to sell a credit spread or something, it's not so bad. Now if you go here to IB Algo, you can favorite your favorite IB Algos, mine is the adaptive one. Now here presets, this is important, this is where you set your presets for your order types for whatever you're trading. So for stocks or options or whatever. So you can see here, you can set your size quantity for when you pull up an order that is the size that is going to appear first as soon as you put the order into the exchange into the order window i mean and then you can set the increment to increase or decrease by so let's say you know that your minimum size is going to be 50 shares and at that point you're going to be you want to increase or decrease by another 50 shares every time so you'll see that I'll click apply here. You can see a buy order appears at the bottom here with 50 shares. Now if I want to increase or decrease that size, you can see that when I increase or decrease, it increases by the amount that I have selected. So that is quite a useful feature. Okay, so yep. So basically you can set that for options, CFD, futures, basically any instrument. Mine is set to two for options. So let's say I want to buy an option or let's say uh, just trade an option here. So let's say I pull up this option and I click buy, right away it's set to two quant contracts to start. So that's quite important. You need to know your size. Guys, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this video here. A couple of, one other thing here was account window where you have a couple of interesting options here. So you can show round values to the nearest whole number. If you don't want to see rounded values, you turn that off. You can choose to, when you export your portfolio, you can choose to include these things and you can change the font size. Um, this is basically all the stuff that shows up when you pull up your account window. Effects portfolio, and that's pretty much it. And then you have these extra features, guys. So in my opinion, the most important features of customization on Trader Workstation are in the Display tab and the Charts tab. And there's a few in the general configuration that we talked about. But that's pretty much it, guys. So. I would like to wish you a great day. And if you learned something from this video, if you found it helpful, please leave a comment down below. And I would like to hear from you. And yeah, take care. Bye. Have a nice one. Ciao.